Welcome back to Fox Recaps. Today I'm going to explain the movie The Princess Diaries, released in the year 2001. Mia Thermopolis is a shy 15-year-old girl who lives with her painter mother in a renovated San Francisco firehouse. She is socially conscious and has a hard time making friends. As a result, she isn't very popular at school and is often bullied by a cheerleader, Lana Thomas. Mia is best friends with a girl named Lily Moskowitz, who shares similar personality traits to her. Mia has a crush on one of the popular guys, Josh Bryant, who is also Lana's boyfriend. She sees them kissing and imagines herself in Lana's place. That day, Mia goes against Josh in a debate competition. A confident Josh makes everyone cheer with his bold opinions, but when it is Mia's turn, she stutters, making the entire class laugh at her. Humiliated, she runs away as everyone makes fun of her. After school, her mother says that her grandmother on her father's side has come to San Francisco from Genovia and wishes to meet her. Mia is confused as to why she wants to meet all of a sudden when she has never bothered to contact them till now. The next day after school, she goes to the address and ends up in front of a massive mansion. She is welcomed by a butler who leads her to her grandmother, Clarice Rinaldi. Mia is then informed that her grandmother is actually the Queen of Genovia, a small European kingdom. The reason she wanted to see Mia was to inform her that her father was Crown Prince of Genovia and, due to his recent death, she is now the next in line to the Genovian throne. At first, Mia thinks that the old woman is joking, but she soon puts two and two together and is beyond shocked to find out that she is a princess who is now responsible for an entire kingdom. The queen says that she will have to move to Genovia and become an entirely different person than she is now. Overwhelmed by all the information, Mia refuses to be a princess and runs away. When she returns home, she is mad at her mother for hiding the fact that they are royals. It turns out that after Mia's parents divorced, they agreed to let her live with her mother so she could have a normal childhood. They had planned to tell her when she turned 18, but now that her father is dead, she has to take on the responsibility. The next day, she, her mother, and the queen talk about the matter. The queen wants to introduce her as the princess to the world, but before that, she wants to train her on how to act like a princess. Mia is strictly against the idea, but her mother persuades her to attend the princess classes and decide if she wants to be a royal after that. Till the ball, Mia will have to keep this a secret. The queen then sends Mia off with the head of security, Joe, who has been appointed to take care of her and ensure her safety until she is declared a princess to the world. Mia is also gifted a limo for her daily trip to the school. She picks up Lily on the way, who is mesmerized by the car. After school, Mia goes to a car repair shop and finds out that her old car costs $400 to repair. Lily's brother Michael, who works in the shop, has had a crush on Mia for a long time, but she hardly acknowledges him. Following that, Mia goes to the mansion for her first princess lesson. The queen critiques her looks and tells her assistant everything that needs to be changed. She also teaches Mia about good posture and hygiene that a princess should possess. Following that day, Mia learns about all the royal etiquettes, from dancing, to dining, to personal presentation. Every day after school, she goes to the mansion for the lessons. Because of this, she and Lily hardly get to spend time together. Since Mia is Lily's only friend, she gets very lonely for the next couple of days. One day, the queen invites an Italian stylist, Paolo, to do a makeover on Mia. He compliments Mia on her natural beauty, although his expression says otherwise. Paolo and his assistants pluck her eyebrows, straighten her hair, and give her facials and manicures to make her look much more presentable. He also breaks her glasses and makes her wear lenses instead. By the end of it, Mia looks like a completely different person. The queen is impressed by her granddaughter's new look, but she strictly tells Paolo and his assistants to keep the makeover a secret. The following day, Mia and Joe go to pick up Lily for school. Michael sees her new look and is mesmerized by her beauty. Lily, however, is not very happy about the makeover because she thinks her friend is turning into one of the mean girls at school. She makes Mia wear a hideous hat to hide her new hair. The two get into a massive argument because she thinks Mia is going to ditch her one of these days. Not being able to handle her friend's indifference, Mia tells Lily the truth. 
Suffice it to say that Lily is surprised, but she agrees to keep it a secret when Mia explains that it is for her safety. When in class, Lana bullies Mia to take the hat off and everyone is surprised by her beautiful hair. The following day, Michael asks Mia to come to a music convention that he is going to perform in. He is really passionate about music and hopes she will be there to watch him perform. Mia promises to come but is dismissive about it. When she reaches school, she is swarmed by reporters who ask her several questions about being a princess. The secret has somehow gotten out and Mia is in trouble. She believes that Lily told it to everyone, but Lily insists it wasn't her. When the situation gets out of hand, the queen comes to the school. They find out that the stylist Paolo was the one who told the media about Mia to claim his way to fame. The next evening, the queen holds a royal dinner party where she presents Mia to some high-ranking royals from around the world. The dinner goes pretty well until Mia accidentally lights a guest's sleeve on fire and dumps his arm into an ice bucket. As she tries to pick it up, the servers trip and fall to the ground, dropping the fruits onto the guests. The queen sits holding her head at the disastrous dinner, but the guests laugh it off. In the next training season, contrary to Mia's predictions, the queen isn't mad at her. In fact, she cancels all her meetings to spend a day with her granddaughter. They go to the arcade together and have a lot of fun. The queen plays all of Mia's favorite games, takes pictures with her in a photo booth, and tries her favorite corn dogs. On their way back home, Mia drives, but while trying to climb up a slope, the car's brakes malfunction. She crashes the car into San Francisco's famous cable cars loaded with people. The police are about to arrest Mia, but the queen uses her public speaking abilities to persuade the officers into letting them go. By the end of the encounter, he even calls a police car to drive the royals back home. Mia is impressed by her grandmother's skills and even calls her the best queen. When she goes to school the next day, she is surrounded by kids asking for her autograph. She was used to being unseen, but now she is the talk of the school. Even Lana pretends to be her friend to a reporter for clout. Her longtime crush, Josh, asks her out on Saturday to a beach party and Mia agrees to go. She then apologizes to Michael for not being able to come to the convention. He is clearly hurt that she is ditching him for Josh. At night, Mia's mother points out that Josh never liked her before he knew she was a princess, but Mia ignores her comment. The beach party goes well for the first few hours, that is, until the reporters crash the party looking for Mia. She and Josh hide in a shack. He tries to kiss her, but she retreats because something doesn't feel right. When they come out, Josh forcefully kisses her to give the media something to talk about. Following that, Lana and her group trick Mia into changing her clothes in a tent and invite the paparazzi. They snap photos of her covered in only a towel, which are sure to make headlines the next day. After returning home, a humiliated Mia cries in her mother's arms. The following morning, the unflattering photos make the news with exaggerated and outrageous headlines, which upset the queen. Mia apologizes for her actions and admits that she is unfit to be the princess. The queen still invites her to the ball and asks her to bring any friends she wants, except Josh. After Mia leaves, Joe makes the queen understand that Mia is still a teenager and her granddaughter before she is a princess. The two agree on the fact that Mia is ready to take on the responsibility to be the ruler of their country, seeing how she took the criticism and reacted accordingly. At school, Mia apologizes to Lily for not being herself for the past few days and for missing a talk show that Lily had invited her to. The two reconcile and decide to go to the ball together. Later during gym class, Josh starts making fun of Mia again. She hits him with a ball and wins a baseball match against him to teach him a lesson. In the evening, Michael comes to her house to deliver her car from the car shop. Mia apologizes for not coming to his show and invites him to be her date at the ball. However, a hurt Michael refuses to acknowledge her and sarcastically claims that Josh would look better in a tuxedo. Mia and her nerdy friend are together during lunch when Lana and her group make fun of the two. Having had enough of the bullies, Mia smothers ice cream on Lana's dress, embarrassing her in front of everyone. Later that day, the queen apologizes for being harsh on her and asks her to give a speech to renounce her title to the people at the ball. She also hands Mia a diary that her father wanted to give her for her 16th birthday. 
After she leaves, Mia decides to run away to Colorado, scared of disappointing the queen and the people at the ball with her speech. The responsibility feels like too much burden for her, so she has decided to take the easiest way out. After packing the bags, she reads a letter her father had left her. In the letter, he explains the importance of courage for a royal. He also claims that he loves her mother and her very much. Touched by his words, Mia changes her mind and decides to go to the ball. Since she had told everyone she would come to the ball herself, she has to drive in the pouring rain. To her misfortune, the car breaks down on the way. Somewhere else, Michael receives a pizza with sorry written on it. After realizing that Mia is making an effort to make him feel better, he decides to go to the ball. Just when Mia starts to give up, Joe arrives in the limo and picks her up. When Mia doesn't arrive for a long time, the queen starts the speech. In the middle of it, she sees Mia drenched from head to toe, ready to talk, so she leaves the stage for her. At first, Mia stutters like she usually does when speaking in public, but then she remembers her father's words and gives a heartfelt speech to the crowd. At the end of the speech, she announces herself as the Princess of Genovia, making the guests applaud. Moments later, she is crowned as the princess. She then changes into a beautiful dress and dances with Michael. The pair excuse themselves and come to the garden. Michael expresses his feelings to her, and the two finally kiss. In the following scene, we see Mia flying to Genovia to officially take on the duty of being a royal. Her mother is also moving with her, and Michael and Lily are visiting for summer vacation. At the end of the movie, we are shown the massive palace of the royals of Genovia. That was all from the video. I hope you liked it. Subscribe for more content like this and hit the like button to help us out. Also, leave a comment if you want us to recap your favorite movie. Until next time, take care.